Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 3, part of this playlist, which I'm calling Characterizing Multivariate Data. So to jump in today's topic, which is mean vectors and covariance matrices for subsets of variables. Okay, So sometimes a researcher is interested in two or more different kinds of variables measured on the same sampling unit. For example, P variables collected from in classrooms might be partitioned into P1 variables related to students, P2 variables related to teachers, and P3 variables related to the physical classrooms. So, right, so then we let Y be a random vector partitioned into three subsets, Y1, Y2, and Y3. So each of these, Y1 is a vector with P1 variables, Y2 is a vector with P2 variables, and Y3 is a vector with P3 variables. So even I should have perhaps put Y equals this to illustrate that that's a random vector, but we're just partitioning it into three different variables. Now, the number of variables in each vector adds to P, so P equals P1, P2, P3. Now let's partition the population parameters first. So in general, a random vector Y can be, with P variables, can be partitioned into K subsets. Now subset I has PI variables. And of course, the, the number of variables in each subset adds to P, the original uh, vector. So our, our original Y vector, and I probably should have put Y equals this, can be partitioned into K subsets. And if we look at the mean of that random vector, which is our population mean, right? So we take the expected value of Y, but this is partitioned into K subsets. So each one of these subsets has PI you know, components, they're, they're vectors. And the expected value goes into each of those, just giving the expected, you know, the mean of subset one, the mean of subset two, all the way to mean of subset K. Now note that each of the, see, these are vectors. So the mu i over here, I mean the yi and the mu i, these are made up of vectors. And, that, and then of course that all equals the population mean vector. Now the covariance matrix, and I'm going to start writing it out in a few different ways. They're all equivalent, but I think this is really going to help in the next video when we look at linear combinations of our random variables. This notation shift will, I think, help tremendously. So the variance of Y, now remember Y is a vector, so that creates a covariance matrix. That's equally the same as the covariance of Y. And then we can partition it, our Y into the K different subsets, covariance of Y. But when I think of covariance, co means two things, how two things vary. So I always like to put a comma, you know, in here and put the two objects that we're trying to find the covariance for. Right? Now, some will just, since it's the same object, the random vector y, some will just write it as the covariance of y. And then the variance of y, of course, is the same as the covariance on itself. But using this notation is going to help tremendously, I think, in this video and the next one. So then if we expand the, the random y vectors into the k subsets, then when we look at the covariance, you take the first subset and covary it with the first subset here. And that's what creates the sigma 1, 1. This is the covariance matrix of the first set of variables, first subset with the first subset of variables, you know, on itself. Then you take the first subset of variables and covary it on the second subset. And that's what the sigma 1, 2 is. Then you take y1, the first set, and covary it on yk. And that creates this sigma 1k. It's the covariance matrix with the first subset of variables covaried with the kth set of covariance. And then you do the same, y2 with each of those. And that creates this row 
all the down way down to yk with each of these and that creates this variables and note that this is a symmetric matrix now generically of course you just call it capital sigma that's the covariance matrix of the random vector y uh, this is symmetric so off diagonals are equal but to write it in this subset notation this matrix sigma 1 2 is not equal to sigma 2 1 they could be different dimensions so this could be a 2 by 3 matrix but then this would have to be a 3 by 2 you know so we, we can say that the transpose of one is equal to the other that's a one one way to say it now Here's a big note that if variables and vector yi, so one of these subsets, are independent of the variables in another yj, then the covariance matrix is zero. It's the zero matrix. And that's actually a property that I don't know if I pointed out before. But if two variables are independent, then the covariance is zero. They don't, they don't covary. It's zero. Now, the sample statistics are... In an, in an analogous way. So let y be a p by 1 random vector with, sub, with k subsets. Then y1, y2, yn are the n observation vectors, which are measured on a, uh, from a sample of n units or subjects or objects. So we take the ith observation, and that's what this is, yi. It's partitioned into k subsets. So remember, the i has to be there to say we're the ith observation. And then the 1, 2, all the way to k, that tells us what subset. But remember, these are vectors themselves. So in subset 1, there's p1 vector, uh, random variables. So there's p1 variables here. The, the yi2, there's p2 random variables. So it's yi2 in each of those cases to say that it's the ith observation second subset and then the index goes from one to p2 the same way with yik so this is a p by one vector now the sample mean is the sample mean vector is actually the mean of each component but when you think of it in terms of subset it's just the mean vector for subset one mean vector for subset two and on down but remember this has p1 components and the mean vector consists of the sample mean for that component, that random variable, you know, so it's it's y bar one one, y bar one p one. You know, there's p one of those. Then there's p two components. You know, mean sample means in the second subset and all the way down. So this is a p by one vector. Now the expected value of our mean vector it goes into each component or each subset, and then the mean of this subset, you know. Oh, that's not the expected value. It just equals mu1, and it equals mu2, and it equals mu k. So this, the capital E shouldn't be there. And then this creates a mean vector mu, which is p by 1. So mu1 is a p by 1 vector. This implies that the sample mean vector is unbiased for the population parameter mu. Now the sample covariance is defined the same way, it's just denoted by S, but when you partition it, you think of it in terms of these partitions. So there's it's K by K partitions, but the whole matrix is P by P, right? It's a We're looking at a P dimensional random vector Y. So that, so to look at the sample covariance of a P dimensional uh, random vector, it creates a P by P covariance matrix. So the sample covariance can be thought of as S11. <clears throat> That's the covariance matrix between the uh, variables in subset 1. Uh, S21 is the co sample covariance between the, sec the second subset of variables and the first subset of variables and so on. And again this is a symmetric matrix. It's not saying the dimensions of say S1 are equal to S2. Because, but but the transpose of one has to equal the other, and that creates this symmetric matrix here. Okay, well that's all I have for this video. In the next video, we're going to look at combinations of random variables. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one.
Thanks. Bye.